Welcome to the Flat Track Factory. In the first video, we talked about flat track body position, what it is, and some strategies on how to improve yours. In this part, we'll talk about movement on the bike and the dynamic nature of riding a motorcycle. Stick around. Part one got some fun feedback and criticism. And I guess on YouTube, if you're not getting some criticism, you're not making an impact. Let's talk about what I think, what works for me and how I think about it. Is it the way you should think about it? No. Is it the only way to think about it? No. Could someone else have another opinion? Sure. I uh, invite you to put up a video about yours. So again, in my experience, the motorcycle really only cares about pressure, weight on the tires. That's it. Everything else above that is in the pursuit of applying the appropriate pressure to the contact patch on the right end at the right time. Generally speaking, with the high center of gravity on a motorcycle and the relatively short wheelbase, it's kind of a unicycle. On the gas, the front tire becomes pretty irrelevant, and on hard decel, the rear tire becomes pretty irrelevant. In the middle of the corner, they both become weighted. So, of course, there are caveats, there are exceptions. Again, uh, I'm not really talking about that. I'm trying to speak in broad, general terms about the way I think. So, that's uh, a little bit of uh, background about where this is coming from. It's more of a discussion with your buddy sitting in the shop on a Saturday than uh, the end-all, be-all. So, that said, uh, I thank, uh, I thank the people that have um, been positively impacted for reaching out to me and uh, saying that uh, they enjoy the video. So this is for you, and I hope it has some value. All right, so what, is the, what does the motorcycle want? Uh, it wants, I don't know, <laughs> still trying to figure this out. Maybe after a few more years I will. But uh, for today's discussion, uh, if we're to deconstruct the lap and start at some point, you know, let's say the start finish line on a on our on a short track for for a reference point. The motorcycle is on the is on the rear tire, and you're going to get ready to transition to deceleration, which I believe on the rounder short tracks is probably the only place on the track that you can really make a difference if your lap time is towards the fastest of the night. That's where I think the difference is made, and maybe through the center of the corner. Uh, really, when you get back to the gas, that's kind of the easy part, um, relatively compared to working the uh, front end of the motorcycle. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. What do we need to do to help the motorcycle get from on the gas to the point where we'll pick the, back, uh, the gas back up? And I talked about this a little bit about being forward on the motorcycle with the bike going down underneath you. This puts us in a neutral place and allows us to react and kind of let the bike flow underneath us and have room to uh, err. I think this is why you'll see road racers in these hyper committed uh, positions of hanging off of a motorcycle because the the consistency of the grip surface is uh, higher and the grip level is higher. So uh, at some point, I'm going to talk to your road racers that I see leaning in. So you want to be uh, on this side of the motorcycle, weight forward on the way into the corner. Or again, when I say you got to, you don't have to do anything. I'm telling you how I think about it. Uh, so for me, that involves, uh, and I'll, I'm going to try to use my hands here, and I'll show you from both angles, is having your body upright forward and the motorcycle is going to push down. And then I try to turn my body a little bit this way to look through the corner. So from the other angle, that's going to be from the back of the motorcycle. We'll get back there on the other part of the lap. We're going to move forward on the bike and turn the bike like this. And then look, our, look at our body turn this way through the corner. As the bike goes down this way, we are going to push the bike down. Right elbows up, 
So off the gas, right? On the gas to off the gas, on the gas to off the gas, and bike will come down like you've got a hold of a shovel, digging that way, generally speaking. So it's a, it's a big dynamic movement, and this is where I see a lot of people um, leaving room for improvement is lack of movement on the bike. They may be in a correct position, if you want to use the word correct, for one part of the lap, but they, they'll stay there. Um, I don't want to pick on anybody, but you know, we'll be honest here. As people lose their physicality, uh, as they age, if they lose flexibility and strength, uh, I think that uh, you'll see some of those people on the back of the motorcycle and never move. Um, some people will also move towards the front and never stay there. It's a dynamic sport. So front of the motorcycle, from the flag stand into the corner. Then as we go to the gas, we need to pick the motorcycle up. You'll end up relative to the motorcycle back into the inside of the motorcycle. I tend to think about it as the motorcycle stands up and goes away, away from me. So again, I'll do my hands for you. So I'm forward, leaned, uh, not, lean, not leaned in, forward on the motorcycle, and the bike's turned in. Then, as go to the gas and pick your foot up, those two things are connected, we are going to end up back here. On the way in, on the way out. Let's show up from the other angle. On the gas, now we're going to go into the corner, out of the corner, into the corner, out of the corner. So from my standpoint, I feel like I'm static. Now, what, am I? I don't know. Um, maybe we'll get some uh, new video equipment, a drone, a track rental, a video uh, producer team, <laughs> and all this sort of stuff, and we can try to capture some of this. But uh, for now, this is going to be more of a uh, conversational exercise. So to me, the motorcycle moves forward and to my right, and I stay more static on the bike. That's what I feel like I do with the bike. Um, do I move back to the inside? I don't, I, I don't know, but it's a perceptual thing. So. Now, why, why do we do this? We do this again because we are giving the motorcycle what it needs. On the way in to the corner, the motorcycle unloads the rear and transfers its weight to the front of the motorcycle and turns the motorcycle, as you lean the motorcycle, you turn the motorcycle from underneath you to the left. Um, this is a perceptual thing in my mind. The motorcycle doesn't kick the rear out. It turns the front underneath, out from underneath the rear tire. The rear tire goes straighter and the front tire is leaned over and cuts into the corner like this. And then as you roll off of the gas and the bike comes back into line, I perceive that the rear tire catches back up to the proper track where the bike comes back into line. And then at that point, we're gonna crack the throttle. Um, wider cushion tracks or whatever where you never really get the bike back straight, um, uh, that's one of the fascinating um, details about the sport that, uh, as I say in this channel a lot, it depends. But um, generally speaking, you're trying to get the weight from the back of the motorcycle on the gas. You're going to go to the front, turn the motorcycle out from underneath the rear tire to the left. And then as your grip comes back to you, as the corner load comes off, or the, the braking force comes off rather, the bike is going to track back to two-wheeling, and as that happens, we're going to transition from the forward outside of the bike to the rear inside of the bike. Very often we have um, road racers who, even if they intellectually understand, they cannot lean in on the way in to the corner. They'll do it out of habit, uh, they'll do it out of comfort. When they go to 10 tenths, they lose the, um, well, they, they gain their muscle memory back and they go to the inside, leave with their shoulder and their head. Do not do this. I see you guys um, appear out of the road race paddock, 
knock your head on the ground, crack a collarbone, and that's the end of you. So we don't want that to happen. So be very careful about that. That's why I suggested having a a um, astute friend with a good eye and an honest uh, uh, interaction with you to tell you what you're doing and probably do some video recording. So that's what we're doing on the way into the corner. And we want to make sure we stay on top of the bike to the, to the front to wait the front. And then we are going to go to the gas. And as we do that, we pick our foot up. People don't want to pick their foot up. One of the main reasons I say people do not want to pick their foot up is they have been in the wrong place on the motorcycle the whole time on the way into the corner. They're back and the front end feels vague. It doesn't have the assistance that it needs. It doesn't have the weight on it. You're not in the right position. So you're waiting to go to the gas. You're waiting to pick your foot up and it, their foot ends up down the whole time, which is exhausting. And then you're more exhausted and you can't do what you're supposed to do to get in the right place. So it's a uh, you're auguring yourself into the ground. So the the physical nature of the sports, we need to assist the motorcycle by applying uh, your weight to it when it needs it. And uh, this is something that a, a car engineer would do if they could. They would move weight. In fact, some of them have been caught doing some of this in uh, really fantastical ways. But we have the advantage of having so much of a large percentage of our weight on the motorcycle compared to what a car can do that um, if you're not moving on the motorcycle, you are leaving a tremendous amount of lap time uh, un, uh, unobtained. So that's about all I can do in stream of consciousness uh, in, in a video. Um, we'll take a look at this and I'll look for some more of your feedback and see if we can clarify any of it and unpack it a little bit more. Thanks for watching.